Hello everybody and welcome to the review of chapter 12 of Scattered Servants uh, and it's called Revival Time. We've got Wendy and Craig here and we have just sang um, Spirit Breakout which is really <laughs> art. Thank you Wendy and it talks about revival. So it's just been great. Um, it's a great little chapter and it is about revival and um, it begins with the story of the churches in South Africa and the initial line is the church is tasked to re rewrite the story of the city mm. and it starts with a, a usual leadership conference um, where they decide on how to increase the effectiveness mm. of the church uh, beyond the building um, and they have their conference and then they'll go home but one of the things they do differently that struck me is they invited the delegates to go out into the community um, before the, they went to the community, I think the things that the, they found that they were the norm they were trying to break, they found that uh, the community, the people were quite difficult to reach. Um, it was founded on an abandoned station of London Missionary Society and there was also widespread disinterest in the Kingdom of God. Mm. I, I love that kind of thing because he, he makes the point about how you know, the people talk about places being hard to reach. That is so unbiblical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It says the church and God's people are filled with his power in order to, to reach places. And actually we're sent to the darkest places altogether, aren't we? So I, uh, I think that's, that's Jesus great. He doing miracles in his hometown, didn't he? Or he didn't do them or something. It's kind of biblical. Sorry, Craig. <laughs> well, there are hard places. Uh, so, I mean, there was Nazareth, wasn't there? But uh, <laughs> I think by and by and large, yeah, uh, yeah. God's hearts for everywhere and everyone. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Pam, I interrupted in my enthusiasm. No, that's fine. Um, I wasn't sure. Yeah. So basically, the delegates went out, and that's where it all changed. So instead of doing the usual, how do we get people to come to the church? They decided, right, we'll go out to meet the community. Yeah. Um, um, they were able to pray for the sick for two hours, well, over hours, and they had multiple hearings, healings. Um, and the whole time they were doing this in the community, they were being watched by a couple of policemen who would initially keep an order on them, but I think, think they thought, oh, this is quite interesting, what people are doing here. And then it sort of kicked off from there. We then got invited to pray for children uh, in the community who were doing occult practices. And then they were asked to pray for policemen in the community, um, mm. including the police officers, like police sergeant and that as well. So it just it shows you the power of God and how it can just, if you're not trying to get people in the building, you go to meet people, it can just kick off and just yeah. skyrocket. Yeah. Is that what Jesus did? So I love that he, like, he always, in that chapter, he goes to the Bible and he talks about how attractive Jesus was to everybody and wherever Jesus was, they wanted to be. And then he, he looks at, like, the Korean revival in the 1800s and about how people were just all over the place, convicted of sin, prostrated, <laughs> and then they had to be like ministered to by the Christians until they received Jesus. And so he does. So he so he goes to like he goes to the Bible. He goes to history and how that gave them faith, and then gives all the amazing stories of what's happened with them. Um, and that encourages me to think about the stories that's happened to us <laughs> and have faith for more. So, yeah, so, I mean, Pam, you've seen things on the street, haven't you? You've been involved in outreach praying. And yeah, I went to outreach and that. Uh, I went to Alwyn once and we went to Carnoustie and we prayed for people uh, there. And just, yeah, just God op opens up our opportunities and just prayers for healing, prayers for lack of faith, prayer for people whose family are not well, stuff like that, yeah. 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 I think it's, it's so key as well that when, when you do it, God acts, and when you start to step out and you start to pray for people, one thing you can be sure of is if you don't tell anybody about the gospel or you're not praying with people and you're not asking God for healing, then it doesn't, it, it's not happening. But 
if you engage, then it is, you know, it, it happens. And that's one of the strong messages I get all through, uh, all through the Scattered Servants book, which is really inspiring. And those stories of revival, you know, whole villages being filled with the atmosphere and the presence of God so that people are just spontaneously mm -hmm. repenting. Wow. We need to, uh, we need to ask God for more of that. Yeah, but there's more because this chapter prophetically speaks into now. So he talks about um, he talks about how when Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, there was an atmosphere shift in her community, and that then led to revival. And then he usually actually even uses the phrase the new normal. Um, and I feel like I, we've had an atmosphere shift in our community, and yeah. there is a new normal. And I don't think. Uh, I don't think God's idea for the new normal is we're all a bit scared of coronavirus and we stand two metres away from each other forever. I think the new normal is that people are a bit more open spiritually. They've had like a little bit of time to like think about stuff and we need to grasp the new normal and help it be God's new normal. So read the book! <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs>